O Most Holy Mother, intercede for us so that we may well understand the teachings of your Divine Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the explanations of the Fathers of the Church. O Immaculate Virgin, I offer you this work and ask that you bless those who hear it. And may it be for the greatest honor and glory of God. Amen. Cleanse my heart and my lips, O Almighty God, who didst cleanse with a burning coal the lips of the prophet Isaias, and vouchsafe in thy loving kindness so to purify me that I may be enabled worthily to announce thy holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily and becomingly announce His gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke The Question About Fasting The scribes and Pharisees said to Jesus, The disciples of John fast often and offer prayers, and the disciples of the Pharisees do the same but yours eat and drink. Jesus answered them, Can you make the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come, and when the bridegroom is taken away from them, then they will fast in those days. And he also told them a parable. No one tears a piece from a new cloak to patch an old one. Otherwise, he will tear the new and the piece from it will not match the old cloak. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be ruined. Rather, new wine must be poured into fresh wineskins. And no one who has been drinking old wine desires new, for he says, the old is good. Comments from the Church Fathers St. Cyril At the first word of the Savior's mouth, they changed the subject, wanting to insinuate that the Lord's disciples and Jesus himself did not observe the law, as follows, the scribes and Pharisees said to Jesus, the disciples of John fast often and offer prayers, and the disciples of the Pharisees do the same, but yours eat and drink. As saying, you eat with tax collectors and sinners, while the law forbids all dealings with the unclean, and you use mercy as an excuse for your transgression. So why don't you fast? as is the custom among those who do the law. However, the saints fast to afflict the body and calm the passions, while Jesus Christ did not need to fast for the perfection of virtue, since, being God, He was free from all passions. Nor did those who were with Him need to fast, because as it were sharing in His grace, it kept them strong in virtue, without the need for fasting. While it is true that Christ fasted for forty days, He did not do so to mortify His passions but to teach the carnal the rule of abstinence. St. Augustine, De Questionibus Evangeliorum 2, 27 and 2, 18. Now Luke evidently relates that this was spoken not by men of themselves, but by others concerning them. How then does Matthew say, Then came to him the disciple of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, unless that they themselves also came, and were all eager, as far as they were able, to put the question to him? Fasting is done in two ways, one, in tribulation, to obtain from God the forgiveness of sins through mortification, the other, in joy, because the less pleasure is obtained from the things of the earth, the greater the taste we perceive in spiritual things. When the Lord was asked why His disciples did not fast, He replied, referring to the two fasts, first, the fast of tribulation, why He continues, Jesus answered them, Can you make the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? St. John Chrysostom, in Matthew, Homily 31. As if to say, the present time is one of joy and contentment, so it should not be mixed with sorrow. St. Cyril. Our Lord's presence in the world was nothing other than a continual festivity, uniting our nature to Him, so that that which was barren might become fruitful. Therefore, the children of the Bridegroom are all those who were called by Him to participate in the new doctrine, not the scribes and Pharisees who only fulfilled the law according to appearances. St. Augustine, De Consensu Evangelist Aram 2, 27 That which is said by Luke alone, can you make the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them, means that the very ones who spoke would make the friends of the bridegroom weep and fast, because they were the ones who were to kill the bridegroom. 
St. Cyril. Having granted to the children of the bridegroom that it was not fitting that they should be troubled, as they were keeping a spiritual feast, but that fasting should be abolished among them, he adds as a direction, but the days will come, and when the bridegroom is taken away from them, then they will fast in those days. St. Augustine, De Questionibus Evangeliorum 3, 18. As if he said, Then shall they be desolate, and in sorrow and lamentation, until the joy of consolation shall be restored to them by the Holy Spirit. St. Ambrose. Or, that fast is not given up whereby the flesh is mortified, and the desires of the body chastened. For this fast commends us to God. But we cannot fast who have Christ, and banquet on the flesh and blood of Christ. St. Basil. The children of the bridegroom cannot fast, that is, fail to receive the food of the soul, but must live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. St. Ambrose. What are these days when Christ will be taken away from us, if he said, Behold, I am with you always, to the end of the age, Matthew 28 verse 20. Verily, no one can take Christ away from you unless you do it yourself. St. Bede. For as long as the bridegroom is with us we both rejoice, and can neither fast nor mourn. But when he has gone away through our sins, then a fast must be declared and mourning be enjoined. St. Ambrose. Finally, there is also talk of the fasting of the soul, as expressed in the following words. So he continues, and he also told them a parable. No one tears a piece from a new cloak to patch an old one. He called fasting old clothes, which the apostle believed should be stripped, when he said, You should put away the old self of your former way of life, Ephesians 4 verse 22. Likewise, he advises that we do not mix the actions of the old man with those of the new man. St. Augustine, De Questionibus Evangeliorum 2, 18. Or in another way, after having received the gift of the Holy Spirit, and man has already been renewed in the spiritual life, another kind of fast is celebrated very opportunely, which prepares the joy of the sacrament, having been what he receives like the old garment, to which a new piece must not be clumsily sewn. For this doctrine pertains to the conversion of a new life, and to do otherwise would be to separate ourselves from the general law of fasting, which teaches us to abstain, not only from the lust of food, but also from the joy of worldly pleasures. This grace which belongs to spiritual food cannot be bestowed upon men who are still given over to their former vices. It also says that they are like old wineskins. So it continues, likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. St. Ambrose. The fragility of the human condition is made known when our bodies are compared to the skins of dead animals. St. Augustine, De Questionibus Evangeliorum 2, 18. The apostles are also compared to old skins, because when they receive the new wine of spiritual precepts, they are broken rather than contain them. Therefore he continues, otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be ruined. They were already new wineskins when they were renewed through prayer and hope after the Lord's ascension, and when they received the Holy Spirit by their desire to be comforted. Therefore it continues, rather, new wine must be poured into fresh wineskins. St. Bede. We strengthen ourselves inwardly with wine and cover ourselves outwardly with clothing. Clothing is the good works that we adjust outwardly, with which we shine before men. Wine is the fervor of faith, hope and charity. Otherwise, the old wineskins are the scribes and the Pharisees. The new cloth and the new wine are the evangelical precepts. St. Gregory of Nyssa. The new wine, because of its natural fermentation, is full of steam, and with its fervor and agitation, expels material impurity from itself. This is the wine of the New Testament, which cannot be restrained by old wineskins, which are aged because of unbelief. Moreover, they are broken because of the excellence of the doctrine, and they allow the grace of the Spirit to be lost, because into a soul that plots evil wisdom does not enter. Wisdom 1 4. St. Bede. Thus the sacraments of the new mysteries are not to be administered to a soul that is not renewed, but that perseveres in its former malice. 
Those who want to mix the precepts of the law, like the Galatians, pour new wine into old wineskins. It continues, and no one who has been drinking old wine desires new, for he says, the old is good. In fact, the Jews, caught up in the taste of the old life, despised the precepts of the new grace, stained by the traditions of their forefathers, they could not taste the sweetness of spiritual words. We have reached the end of another day of comments on the gospel that the Holy Church proposes for us to meditate on today, using the Catina Aurea. Thanks so much for following along. I ask that, if possible, subscribe to the channel, comment, like and share. May Our Lady reward you for this act of charity. And see you tomorrow, with God's graces. Please.